Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra versus S22 Ultra. Which ones you pick and should you upgrade from the S21 Ultra? Let's find out. What's good guys, you're watching No Limits on channel. So the first thing I have to mention is that both phones are with Exynos processors and also the S21 Ultra has been out for a while and S22 Ultra is the new one and has the latest firmware as well as the S21 Ultra. So let's get to the comparison. Let's start off with the ultra wide lenses and as you can see S21 Ultra has more noise reduction. And when we zoom in we see that the S22 Ultra has less noise reduction and a bit sharper image. With the main camera modules we see almost exactly the same picture quality. I didn't find any major differences. Also, both phones feature 108 megapixel shots. And as you can see, the one on the left with the S21 Ultra is very sharp and probably my handheld uh, shooting wasn't perfect and I didn't notice it while shooting. And the S22 Ultra has a little bit of motion blur. So be careful and hold your phone as steady as possible. But I think the picture quality, the real one, is almost identical. 3X camera modules produce very close results, but I think that S22 Ultra is a touch sharper. And with 10X camera we do see an improvement, with the S22 Ultra it is sharper, definitely. Also both phones feature the macro capabilities and as you can see on the left, the S21 Ultra is a little over sharpened and it feels like it's a painting, not a picture, for real. And the S22 Ultra looks very nice. Now let's get to the selfies and I would say that the selfie mode is much better and really improved on the S22 Ultra. It's more sharpened, it has more detail, very good job. In the shot indoors I used both 10x cameras and as you can see the quality is okay with the S21 Ultra and it's really good and sharp with S22 Ultra. Also if we use 30x crop it looks decent and good and 100x mode is kind of a binocular in your pocket. On this shot with the main camera module we do see a little bit of motion blur with the S22 Ultra and a little more denoise. The ultra wide indoors is sharper on the S22 Ultra by a little bit. Now let's get to the portrait modes, this is my friend who gave me both phones and he's a happy owner of both smartphones and we didn't have enough time to shoot portraits during the daylight but here we have an artificial light so it's plenty of light for both smartphones. And as you can see on the left picture the floor is kind of unnaturally blurred and the right picture with S22 Ultra is having kind of a gradient fall off of the focus. In 3x portrait mode we do see kind of a plasticky skin on the left with S21 Ultra and I do prefer the S22 Ultra, it has maybe a little bit of motion blur but it's less soft. And now let's get to the night shots, they are all shot completely handheld and we'll start off with an ultra wide lens. I do see a bit more detail on the S22 Ultra but both phones are doing a great job because it was very dark. And I used the night mode of course. With the One X camera we see a lot of digital denoise on the S21 Ultra and it's a little warmer in terms of white balance but a bit sharper with the S22 Ultra. Guys, I all the time say a little bit, a bit, a tiny bit because the difference is not that big between those two phones. On 10X camera both phones look mm, really bad to be honest but once again 22 Ultra is a bit better. And now the night selfies. S21 Ultra has a bad white balance as you can see right here and the S22 Ultra is sharper and I do prefer this picture. On this shot with the main camera on a very dark street I see very very noisy sky but at the same time a better white balance with the S21 Ultra. Look at the snow, it's white whereas the 22 Ultra has kind of a yellowy snow. And also the denoise of S22 Ultra is kind of making a rain <laughs> probably out of the sky and it doesn't look exactly natural. But overall the S22 Ultra is sharper. And on this shot with the headlights we do see a bit more noise reduction on the S21 Ultra and also the lens flare is much better and it's less flary on the S22 Ultra but we do see a little bit more noise on the S22 Ultra. And here comes the night portrait with 1x camera and it's a very tough situation for any smartphone. What I see is a good separation on both smartphones and also I do prefer the artificial bokeh of the S22 Ultra. One more night portrait shot and here we once again see a very good separation especially under his arm, kind of a triangle under his arm, it's blurry. 
And to be honest, both phones are kind of messing up with the colors. I don't like the colors on both of those. Then comes the 3x night portrait shot. The white balance is bad and it's very noisy on the S21 Ultra and we see a lot of heavy noise reduction. The picture is plasticky and blurry. The S22 on the other hand is sharper and it has better white balance in my opinion. And one of the toughest scenarios for almost any smartphone in portrait mode, as you can see his arm is extended and we can see kind of a weird hand separation on the S21 Ultra and also we see a better white balance. So the white balance is kind of back and forth between those two phones and sometimes the S21 is winning here and sometimes S22. On S22 I do prefer the separation better and also the bokeh is nicer in my opinion. So guys, now it's time to go to the video part of things. In 4K 30p we do see great image quality, but I can't tell a difference between those two phones, so probably it's kind of identical. In selfie mode we do see a good quality on the S21 Ultra and the sound is more pleasing to me. Just have a listen. So guys, I think my composition is not the best, but you'll definitely hear me and you'll see the difference in selfie cameras on uh, smartphones. One, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, mic check. And probably you'll see the dynamic range because of the sky and overall my skin and the image quality. And the S22 Ultra in selfie mode has a little magenta in my skin, which is not that magenta and the sound is not impressive, to be honest. In 4K60 we do see much worse image quality than in 4K30, all Samsung phones have this problem. And the S22 Ultra is no exception. I think it's a little bit sharper than the 4K60 of the S21 Ultra, but also it has more noise reduction. To be honest, I wouldn't use 4K60 on those phones. With the ultra wide lens in 4K30 we do see almost no difference. I would say the only difference is the magenta tint and you can see it especially well on the brick road. By the way guys, I do look at the pictures side by side on my 5K iMac really closely zooming in and the difference is really negligible. With the 3x telephoto camera in 4K 30p we see a bit softer image with the S21 Ultra and the S22 Ultra has a little better stabilization to my eye and some difference in colors, as you can see. We do have comparable quality with the selfie cameras in video mode and once again the S22 Ultra has a magenta tint, which I don't like. Ten eighty P is okay with the S21 Ultra, it's a little noisier and softer and the S22 Ultra has pretty good 1080p. Also we do have an option to turn on the extra stabilization or super steady mode on the S21 Ultra. Now we're using the ultra wide lens and as you can see it has a huge crop on both phones. And also it's limited to 1080p only. I wish it wasn't, but it is. To my eye S22 Ultra has better stabilization in this mode. With the 1x camera and super steady shot on, we see a lot of noise reduction with the S21 Ultra. Yeah, it's not the sunny day by any means, but as you can see, it's horrible. And S22 Ultra also has a lot of noise reduction, but plus over sharpening, and it's a lot of heavy over sharpening. That is why it looks more sharp, but it's not natural to my eye. And here comes the king, the 8K 24 FPS, which has also a huge crop a lot of noise in the S21 Ultra and it's much softer than the S22's. 8K 24 FPS also has a huge crop on the S22 Ultra, but it has much sharper image, no ghosting effect and overall much more pleasing. The time lapses are in 4K, which is good because for instance iPhone 13 Pro Max can only make a 1080p time lapse for some reason, so both Samsungs are having 4K time lapses and the quality is so close that I can say it's identical. And here comes the slow motion. To be honest, slow motion is a weak spot of Samsung flagships and I would say that the S21 Ultra is a bit softer. But the S22 Ultra once again has this weird magenta tint, I hope they will fix it with a firmware update. And the super slow motion is very noisy and very pixelated and I wouldn't use it whatsoever. The S22 Ultra now has a new feature which is called auto framing, which is great, you have to toggle it on and it will kinda 
replicate the center stage feature of Apple devices. Basically, it will follow you as you move inside a frame, but be careful, stay in the frame for sure. It will zoom in, zoom out, and kind of follow you all the time, which is a great feature if you're, for instance, uh, I don't know, a cook and you're doing something like a live stream on your YouTube channel, for instance, or in TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Can you even go live in TikTok? I'm not sure, but it will replicate the cameraman and those zooms in and zooms out and pans and tilts will be a great addition to your live stream, for instance. And also both Samsungs have the cinematic mode or something, which is basically the picture in picture. You can choose any camera and shoot with the selfie camera as well. And it's a great addition. You can download a third party app for your iPhone for it, but it's not built in. Thumbs up for it and for Samsung. And here comes the portrait video mode. I would say that the S21 Ultra has much worse separation, no 3x portrait mode whatsoever, and the worse stabilization compared to the S22 Ultra, which has a pretty good, let me say a decent, usable portrait mode in video. It's still not perfect, it's still only 1080p as far as I understand, but to be honest, I was impressed. And also guys, pay attention to this red color in the shot. You can see the difference between the red colors on those two smartphones. Both smartphones feature very good zoom capabilities and as you can see, the zoom is just gigantic probably. It was shot indoors, so it's a lot of noise reduction as you can see, especially on the S21 Ultra. But to be honest, it even looks a bit sharper than the S22 Ultra, so a point for S21 here. And on this shot with the ultra wide lens, you can see the difference in exposure, auto exposure levels. We can even see some crashed shadows on the S22 Ultra. And on this shot with the main camera modules, I definitely cannot tell a difference whatsoever. If you do see the difference, guys, please share your thoughts in the comment section below. So here comes the low light videography. With the main camera module at 4K 30 FPS, I do see a noisier picture on the 21 Ultra, but also I did find an autofocus lag. It was out of focus for some time on the S22 Ultra and overall the S22 does have a better image quality. The ultra-wide cameras are not the best choice for low-light scenarios. In S21 Ultra we do see a ton of noise reduction, it looks flat and unnatural. S22 Ultra also looks bad, but a bit better. 3x telephoto camera on S21 Ultra has light leaks and sensor reflections a bit more than the S22 Ultra. But overall, both of those pictures look bad. And also S22 Ultra has better stabilization to my eye. The low light selfie was a surprise. Look at that, the S21 Ultra is very noisy, plus the light streaks from the lights and the light poles, and overall I don't like the image quality of it. S22 Ultra on the other hand is better, the sky white balance is much better, and also it has a very heavy noise reduction as you can imagine. And now let's try to shoot 8K in low light and it looks actually better than I thought, and especially the white balance on S22 Ultra. And here is the 4K60 on the S21 Ultra and the 4K30 on the S22 Ultra. Yeah, I did mess up the settings guys, I'm sorry, but you do see the difference, it's just like night and day. 4K60 in low light is unusable. And also we do see more sensor reflections on the S21 Ultra. Unfortunately, we do see a lot of noise reduction artifacts and uh, the artifacts of stabilization when we use S22 and S21 Ultra while walking. But overall, do use 4K30 during the low light. So guys, finally, the conclusion. So the S21 Ultra, in my opinion, is still a good camera phone. I would say a great camera phone, especially in terms of photo capabilities. So what are the improvements of S22 Ultra? It has a better selfie camera, for sure, but also it has a magenta tint, which can be fixed in firmware update. Please, Samsung, do fix this issue. Also, S22 Ultra does have better 8K quality and a new auto-framing feature, which I do like. 
S22 Ultra has a bit better 3x camera and a better stabilization overall. Also, it has less flaring and less sensor reflections, which is great because, for instance, iPhone is just suffering from it. And by the way, guys, as you saw, I shot a comparison of S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max, so you are welcome to subscribe to see that video in the nearest future. And also, I do have two comparisons of S21 Ultra and iPhone 13 Pro Max and 12 Pro Max on the channel, so you can check it out in the description below. Also, S22 Ultra has better low-light video than the S21 Ultra. But to be honest, overall, all of those benefits and advantages of S22 Ultra are like 5 to 10% better um, in terms of camera performance than the S21 Ultra. And should you really pick a newer phone for those 5 to 10% differences? I'm not sure. To be honest, the S21 Ultra is a great smartphone. It has even better battery life, by the way. But in terms of design, I do prefer the S22 Ultra. So all in all, it all comes down to your budget and your design preferences. So what are your thoughts, guys? Please share them in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, guys, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. My name is Oleg Nikitin and I see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.